Okay, so uh, here you, you see sort of the, the most modern version of our robot. We're, we're very proud to finally make this technology the size of the human fingertip, right? Um, and, and hopefully we'll go even smaller, right? I, I think maybe rice grain size would be appropriate if we were gonna do brain surgery, right? I, imagine a version of this technology that could go anywhere in the human body. But if you're going to advance medicine, you also have to be willing to lean into the world of business development. You have to be willing to lean into the, the financial world, into the world of venture capital. And we think that there's a confluence in the human stomach where a little moving eyeball can make a virtual endoscope and show all of the stakeholders that this is a kind of technology uh, that can have an immediate application and potentially a very interesting future. And we've we've touched a little bit on why this matters. Um, it, it matters because when we look at millions of, of endoscopies done every year all around the world, um, what we what we learn when when we interview these patients is we learn that they've usually gone through many, many trips to the hospital trying to get to this powerful procedure. We often hear stories of a perception of gatekeeping, of, of a perception that, uh, you know, their healthcare providers and the insurance providers were a little reticent to send them straight into a powerful procedure. So they would get tried on, you know, experimental drugs to cut the acid. Um, they, would, they would be forced to try different diets, uh, all because it just doesn't make sense to jam a tube into your body in a hospital as the very first step. 